Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Let me say Happy New Year. I hope 2024 is better than the year before and they keep getting better. M much love to my friends and family and anybody who's ever come into my life. I love you all. Hope you have a great year. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Marvels. Now, I have a little bit of an issue. Well, several issues with this. But one is a deep-rooted role-playing one that I'll explain. But I've talked about me being a game master, dungeon master. And I've used all the type of uh, characters from any type of universe. DC, Marvel, even mixing things like Star Trek, Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, etc. So I have a mindset and my own little plot lines in my head, some scripts that I write here and there that I add to every now and then. And I try to make that evident in how I think a movie's going and if this is not for me or I would have wrote it a different way. So I want to say the Marvels has a lot of fun in it. It has, I think, major problems story-wise, structurally-wise, like putting it together. And I equate this to like the Wonder Woman movie, oh, the first Wonder Woman I loved and I think is a good movie. The second Wonder Woman movie, I think it's like 1984. You know, I had fun with it, but it's not really a stand-up, critically acclaimed, like a good movie. I think The Marvels is a good movie. It's fun. Um, but one thing that I'll get to eventually kind of, you know, kind of disappointed me so much. But I'll get to that because only a couple of friends will really know that. So I'm a fan of the show Miss Marvel. I really thought they put a pretty good cast together. And I kind of enjoyed the unique or a little bit more like refreshing, creative ways they did things on that show. I think it's good for like a teenager type element and, you know, uh, a fanboy. or So a real fan of like real superheroes, that type of thing. And I think it worked well. I really remember a lot of the family stuff being um, pretty compelling in a way. Like, not, you know, it's funny because they, they go overboard. But some things, like, you kind of felt were, like, believable in a Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, I'm enjoying that. Now, the first Captain Marvel movie, I went in not planning to enjoy it. I had seen some stuff, like, um, behind-the-scenes stuff. Maybe not of that movie, but in general. And I sort of got a disliking to Brie Lawson, which is my own personal fucking thing. I don't want to put myself in her shoes. What she goes through, she's an actress, she's really good. And I think she is good in the part. I, however, would have chosen Katie Sackhoff. I think she would have nailed it, been a much better one. But I liked Captain Marvel, the first movie. I got into it. Again, the, the difference between having fun watching a movie and sitting here trying to, you know, give it a score and say, oh, no, it's a, I don't know. You know, I'm too much of a fanboy in the cosmic sense of, you know, characters like Silver Surfer and just seeing the displays. And I've said this so many times in so many podcasts, but I like the Green Lantern movie, and I know it's not a good movie. But I've watched that movie so many times. Why? Because I'm such a fan of Green Lantern and the, seeing the power stunts online, so... It's a spectacle, it works, and now that you got the show, the, the Captain Marvel movie, and you got, like, other things that are attached, because Monica Rambeau is in this, who eventually, they come try to come up with names for her, but I like, you know, Photon, because you can't give her Captain Marvel, anyway. There's her threading through the shows, in a sense, where she got her powers, and Wanda, and how it kind of feeds in. I was surprised how well this was able to tie that in and have fun with it. Now, there's a cringe moment in this movie where there's singing and stuff. But let's get that spoiler out of the way. I don't think you should do that in this movie. But it fit because of the, you know, the premise that was getting leaded up. It's, it's okay, but not for me. But I thought the off-puttingness of them together, which is done on purpose, the understanding of what's going on with their powers and the little montages they did. I thought they were cute enough that they worked. And I got a hand it to Brie Lawson. I like her. 
for the most part. I've seen her in other things where I think she's fabulous, but I don't know enough about her to say she's one of the best leading actresses of our time. But, all right, so the movie's directed by Nia DaCosta. It seems pretty new, I think. It, she has writing credits. Um, Brie Lawson is in it. T- Tiona Paris, which is Monica Rambeau. I think, right? Or it's the mother, but there's a lot of um, people in here that are talented. Uh, well, of course, Samuel Jackson's in it. I don't think there's a deep understanding of the story, and where my problems come in is you're revealing something again in a movie. See, I always adhere to late plan it out from the beginning. There should have been key things about the supreme intelligence about what carol danvers did and why she's away you're revealing that you're getting her um connection with monica and you're 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 building on that throughout the movie and then kamala seems like a third wheel and it's portrayed that way on purpose and i think it's actually really well done But again, you got a movie that's on a cosmic scale, because here comes my part of disappointment. So, since I'm a big fan of the comics, one of my favorite characters is Quasar. One of my favorite items in comic books are the quantum bands. Okay, so they, I thought, and I hope that they would make them the nega bands, because that's how in the book, comic books, like, Rick Jones switches with um, Captain Marvel with the Nega Bands. But, okay, so they're going with Quantum Entanglement. is how their powers are synced. And they keep switching places. And it, the, the bracelet that, according to the movie, found Kamala through space and time is a Quantum Band, or Bangle, they call it. And the villain in this movie gets the second Quantum Band. And through powering it with her... Um... Axe weapon, I forgot the fucking name of it, and the annihilation, whatever the fuck it is, her big hammer thing. She's able to use it. Now, obviously, she had both of them, the movie would have been over. That's what they're kind of letting you know. Like, so Kamala has a second one, they don't know that. And she's doing all these feats, and it's leading up to calamities that I'll get into because, again, you're piecing together the three shows, well, the two. It's Captain Marvel movie, uh, you know, Miss Marvel TV show with Kamala, and the threads that Monica Rambeau is weaved through through you know, WandaVision. And so you're getting that in, you're getting the character development, the chemistry going. You got to build it up to the movie, make it believable when they get together at certain plot points and, you know, st- stages of the fucking movie. And. Then you got the details of what Captain Marvel was doing, um, Monica Rambeau's, you know, hurt feelings about her disappearing, and then there's the scroll, you know, refugee issue, and that issue, and then my brain kept going back, well, Secret Invasion, and, and that's Nick Fury, that had to do with him promising to get him a planet, and it didn't really drive because it's... You know, 1994, you're going back in time. So I'm going to say, um, thumbs up, like, with the chemistry and how it works. It's a, it, it becomes fun when they're trying to get their powers together. The growth of them going through it. And Brie loss is hard to nail down. And it's probably to the, the directors. But I like her. I, she's grown on me as the character. I like Monica Rambeau and Miss Marvel. Samuel Jackson and Remnants of shield or as they call it about the fucking saber sword whatever they're changing it up to and again besides the cringe moment where they're doing the singing which i thought comes off well enough you're gonna like a movie you can have fun with it fine i'm not you know was, was it plays well was it scripted well is the dialogue great in the movie you know no there's a couple of parts that i you know could, could maybe stand out but you're getting through the movie, you got these time displacements, the plot. Now this villain has one of the quantum bands and she's opening jump point portals to have one thing come into another. 
Miss Marvel is saying she's doing it to hurt her, so she's taking water from Earth or um, the sun from Earth, or the, you know, another planet, and trying to give it back to Hala because it's revealed. Spoiler. Captain Marvel kills the Supreme Intelligence, which fucked up everything in Hala. I don't know, deadened their son. You know, the Supreme Intelligence, like, I guess, ran everything. And Hala, for some reason or another, is, like, barely breathable, so she's taking air from some place to put it there. And the Quantum Band is opening up quantum tunnels or, you know, little wormhole-type portals. And they've got to thwart her mission, and, you know, by the end, it's a big thing with the Quantum Band. I thought it was a little anticlimactic. Uh, the way it's done, because after it's done, there has to be a feat, you know, a spectacular feat that has to be done to solve it all. Because they didn't make it where you beat the villain and the problem goes away. It was, oh shit, we gotta beat the villain, get the second quantum band, and see what we can do. And again, the quantum bands, I love the way they look in the comics. I hate what they did with them eventually, but the original quantum bands, the gold and black the 14 gems were so iconic to me so lovable to me the yellow energy creations he makes with the constructs here it's purple and the bands look weird they look like i don't know (laughs) it's just a weird thing because it's part of my child like my characters i have so many use the quantum bands quantum is one of my main characters so i keep using on major cosmic stuff. Um, just a real close to, close to my, and it sounds ridiculous because it's a fucking movie. They're going to make the quantum bands, you know, how they are. But I had this whole idea in my head with a pilot on TV with, you know, one of the guys from Supernatural, the tall, slender guy, you know, him being on S.H.I.E.L.D., going to like the comic book version of him and him getting the quantum bands and then getting progressed into the movies here it seems like all right well there's a weird thing that happened in this movie so getting through all the you know plot points and progressing to the end of the movie like i said it's a little difficult with the time what's going on what did she do why is it such a big deal and it's almost brought up again like i said i kept thinking of i had just watched secret invasion too the ramifications of that and her fucking DNA into Super Scroll shit. So, maybe it was that also playing with it. It's definitely the Quantum Band fucking thing. Because that's the thing that irks me the most. Because I'm so disappointed that they didn't stay true to the comics and make it, like, you know, really true to life. It's so weird. But that's me, the nerd, right? Um, again, you get to the end of the movie. You beat the villain. And I don't know if it's a flub. They did it the way they filmed things. But here's a spoiler, right? So they beat the villain. They got the second quantum band. But the rift in space-time is destroying everything. Another reality is going to bleed in. And this is the incursions, I think, type idea. Because I'll get to the spoiler thing at the end. So the villain's dead. They got the second quantum band. And... Monica Rambeau says, oh, you got to shoot me with all the energy. I'll go close the portal. That's the only way to do it. So one of the little flubs is when they do this, when the movie ends and continues, Kamala only has one band on her arm. So I'm wondering what they were doing. Is it just like the way she filmed the scenes out of order? Or are they really making it known that she takes one of the quantum bands off? Because you're clearly set up to make her protector of the universe she fucking got her and she's got to meet like an entity you know that she has both the bands i don't know if you can do a season or are you really gonna stop her from having a second band so she could be a street level type you know um fanboy you know type character because i think that would be a, a misstep right okay so forget about the original quantum bands in the comics which are energy manipulating artifacts of great power basically the whole electromagnetic spectrum and you can do a couple other things but basically you can use them to channel rechannel different types of energy make constructs just like a green lantern would in a sense 
but these are fueled from the quantum zone, which is the intersection of where all energy passes, and you can open up portals, quantum jumps to basically the way it used to work in the comics is you're in normal space, you quantum jump to the quantum zone. You travel a little bit, and you can come out, and it's almost like, you know, faster than light travel, or it is, I guess. I don't know, go through all the fucking things, but... And a normal human, which is why I loved Quasar and all his personal things, the way they made the character and his growth, can come, can become on par with cosmic beings. So, I guess just like the Green, it is a rip off of the Green Lanterns, but picture Sinestro's ring, but on two, two hands, quantum. Bases. Anyway, so even if the movie is only saying it can absorb, let's say it absorbs light. And it could open up portals. So absorb light, redirect it. Okay, so let's say that. So if you, when Captain Marvel hits her with a light photonic blast, the band absorbs it and she's able to rechannel it back. Seems pretty simple like the regular quantum bands. I don't know if they're limiting it here. And they didn't really go. I thought they were going to do the she can fly through space and fly now. Because that's one of the things Kamala can't do, Miss Marvel. I think she it gets brought up in the in the shows because Photon Monica Rambo has to have a flying moment, and in that moment is is uh, Nick Fury Samuel Jackson. I thought that whole subplot thing was a little again. I'm going back to Secret Invasion, so if my mind was there, and I'm thinking, you know, his wife, the scrolls. Um, they just stopped a terrorist on planet Earth, explosions. And maybe I'm like, my brain kept going into overdrive, like, but it felt a little out of place. So maybe a little forced, because you got to have cats fucking eating people. Like, there is a ridiculousness to the movie that when you add to the disjunction of the story and the plot, the way they're trying to do time things, I'm going to guess it's not going to be viewed as a great movie or a good movie in that sense, but it doesn't take away, you know, did you have fun with the movie? Am I going to, you know, get through it and go, oh, shit, and I watched a two-hour movie, and, you know, I felt, you know, I had fun, blah, blah, blah. I don't really, I go into these things after the fact, for the most part, but I don't really care if the movie does well, if it's considered a flop, if... Marvel is tanking and they're bankrupt in ideas, it, which could be the case, could be true. In general, I enjoy stuff. Um, like, I would shit on a couple of the parts in this movie with the singing and the quantum bands. And I don't know. I could see definitely recommending this to people who just enjoy, you know, what, what you watched already. Um, is this going to be something that drags people in? You know, I don't know. Again, without the full, you know, the knowledge of oh, how much did it make? Although I do do the wiki thing right before, but you know, I try to look at this movie and think of the potential of it connecting with the Marvel universe, and I guess that's where it kind of lays with the post-credit scene type thing. So, Monica Rambo Photon, to close this portal, has to do it from the other side. So she does it, you know, blacks out, whatever, and when the movie continues from Captain Marvel's side, that's when I noticed Kamala, Miss Marvel, doesn't have the second quantum band, or I just made a mistake, whatever. But when it cuts to Monica Rambo, real big spoiler type thing, She's talking to her mom in the hospital, and she's like, oh, I missed you, because that's part of the main movie with her plot, subplot, emotional state. She was in the blip. Mother died. And the mother seems like it's the mother, but then it's revealed that the mother's binary, and she's with Beast, and it's the mutant X-Men universe, and he mentions, oh, Charles wants an update on something. And when she stands up and says, the mother stands up and says, um, you know, who are you? I I really enjoyed Monica Rambeau just going, oh shit. You know, like, I, yeah, I'm a fucking nerd geek who probably likes his bad taste and stuff in this because my bias is just comic book fun. Like I said, I role play it. Um, 
And this is like going on over 30 years consistently. Although there are lulls here and there. Even when it was a pandemic, we switched to an online site. And, um, you know, friends have families and all that nonsense, crazy shit. But I'm going to say watch the movie in a general sense. It, I think it's, it's fun to see them overcome their things and get together. I wish it was done a little more tighter. Explanation should have been already given in the previous movie where you're just going, oh, okay. And they try to do that with some of the things here because the first Captain Marvel movie did have its own memory loss type, who are, who, you know, Veers, that type thing. She gets her memories back. So I get it. But. You know, again, you're doing it in a movie where you're introducing or getting together these other Marvels and you're bringing a lot of, there's a lot of ties between Carol Danvers and Monica Rambo and the mother who passed away from cancer and that kind of hits home, you know, where she was, what she was doing, why she never came back. And it's kind of dumb when you, when it adds up because you know, she beat the Supreme Intelligence calls, all this shit. But it doesn't feel right because, okay, we waited so many years. And uh, another spoiler thing, which is why I like these movies and have fun, when the main character can go and reignite his son. Because that's what we've done in my comic book world. Like, I remember an adventure where um, the son was about to go snowball, we had to make it stabilized. Or... Even another one, because there's all these type of things you go through with space. And the sun needed a boost. The character had to go, you know, feed it energy and, you know, you have to do it properly. It's something that you, like, see in your mind's eye, or I have many times as a role player. And it just is what I think is needed in the cosmic scheme of things. Because they haven't brought Surfer in with the Fantastic Four. Who knows if that'll happen and when. On to the Marvel thing where Captain uh, Monica Rambeau is like in the mutant universe. Is is this their way of like? Because I haven't seen Loki yet. Well, because of the way I put these things out, blah blah blah. I'm wondering if that's going to be addressed. And I heard about some shit about the Kang guy that I've seen here and there. So oopsies, you know we got problems there. The state of Marvel, I really don't think of it in any way, good or bad. I don't go really searching for things, but there are people I like who would agree. And I got to agree with a lot of, almost every point they make on a critical level. You know, there is a criteria for you know, what is a good movie, what is a bad movie in a general sense. And you got to admit that, like, I love a movie, but it's a bad movie. I don't know where this falls in that because of, you know, my bias with the quantum bands. I, I will say it's not very well put together movie in that sense, but the moments of progression with the character growth and development, I kind of like, because Kamala kind of knits it together in a cool way, in an overboard way sometimes, so I can see that. And is it, does it tie, I, I kind of like how it ties in again, but the secret invasion thing threw me off, or I guess throws me off. Because we got a secret invasion thing that goes back in time, I'm not sure, okay, First of all, I'm not sure if this movie does yeah, th this movie does do the back in time thing, or at least does flashback stuff. But Secret Invasion, the same thing. Here you find out about um, Nick Fury. He's in love. He has a wife. You know why he was away, and this movie is about why Captain Marvel was away. And they mention both things in each one because in Secret Invasion, he's supposed to be. Nick Fury promised them that they would find them a planet, the Scrolls. Which I find weird too, because in the movie they go out and warp, and they just go, okay, yeah, we didn't find nothing, we found violence, we came back. And, and that's on the show, I guess, or in the fucking movie. At this point in the movie, the Scrolls are doing a um, refugee thing, and they're trying to make things work, and apparently Captain Marvel just keeps fucking things up. Or oh, this, you know, Kree chick with the fucking hammer is um with the, in the one quantum band and that's tied in also they do a little twisting at the end which i thought was pretty cool but people owe people things a lot 
and they, they you know didn't go with their words so you can it's almost like saying the secret invasion you're really supposed to be sympathetic now i didn't do a review on that i don't know if i'll put one out soon but if that suffers from a main villain that's just unbelievable i, I don't if the camera goes on his face i don't care um yeah no it was good uh Again, I like Brie Lawson in this role, although I would have preferred someone else. i got to admit that. Um, I smile. I see Sam Jackson. It gets a little overboard with the fucking cats. And it's going to have fun. The director wants it to be campy in this place. But I'm, I'm okay with it. I would just like a better tightly knit story with, you know, things that are fleshed out before, maybe given to the next thing. You obviously can use Monica Rambeau for a lot of things now. Is it the X-Men's, you know, jump into the Marvel Universe finally? Well, the proper MCU? I don't know. And I hear like Marvel's doing like a big shake-up with themselves, right? Like in talent or creativeness or they think they're going down. Again, I don't look into these things much at all. The most I do is when I... Get ready to do one of these. I do. I write down a couple of things and I check the wiki. I go up. I do my recording. I even edit it. And then, like, it could be days later. I'm like, oh, I want to know what other people are thinking about the Marvels. And then I'll kind of go into it. But YouTube or things that say, oh, the state of this, the state of that, I don't much really get into. Although I did watch a couple with uh, Star Wars recently. Um, Mauler. Who's one of my favorites? Uh, so yeah, like the state of Star Wars concerns me. Maybe that, maybe that's an answer right there. Is that saying I'm more concerned about Star Wars than I am Marvel? Because I don't care. To, it doesn't bother me. Like I haven't hit that point where I get disgusted or I roll my eyes so much during a movie. Like I fucking find myself doing with some DC movies. I know that sucks to say, but. The Flash movie just fucking aggravated me. That Batman was fucking horrible. Yeah, I don't know. Good cartoon stuff. Anyway, the Marvels, I'm curious to see where this fits in with What If Season 2. Because I did like What If Season 1. I'm wondering if there's going to be some tie-ins to that. Maybe some reveals. But The Beast and Binary, that's like an epic type. Uh, period of time with the X-Men I don't know if you want to call it the Claremont you know time but wow if they're going to put that into Loki because again I haven't seen it or if they're going to try to branch that in you've got to do fantastic like you did the Wanda thing already so I guess everybody's got their foot in the door right X-Men were there Black Bolt put his fucking mouth so it was fucking stupid um Yeah, so maybe this isn't as surprising as I thought, but maybe it's just thinking I saw Binary's outfit on the mother, which would say, um, see, the, the way they make Captain Marvel, she's kind of Binary, but in the comic books, Binary was a, a more powerful version of Carol Danvers, who got the, empowered by like a white hole. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, all these things don't matter with the with the movie, so... And we can't say this is canon, this has really happened, because my brain hard, makes it hard to decipher it, because in the comics, Carol Danvers is like a spy chick or whatever, and she gets exposed to a ray gun that's meant for Captain Marvel or something, and whatever, I could be wrong. But the Marvels, a fun ride, a little choppy here and there, a little too much delving in when you got so much things going on between each other. And if you're going to do it, Maybe a little more breath and taking it in. I don't know. Uh, this is a a jumble. Like a again, my brain kept piecing in. That could be my fault too. Secret invasion and fury, and he's in this, and his the scrolls, and oh shit, you didn't get them their planet, did you? But did you fix the planet now in the end? Because now the timeline is in the like this is current. This movie and. Nick Fury could have been like whatever. So, are they okay? okay. Well, that, that was the Cree for Hey Holla. So the scrolls are so far. But I think there was a moon 
think now I could be wrong again because this could be the show. This tells you why my brain is fucked up on these things. And in general, the, the Marvels is going to be fun if you're, especially if you like everything so far. What has to do with them? I'm pleased and uh, I guess more than satisfied with Brie Lawson, Monica Rambeau, pretty good. Uh, Miss Marvel kind of steals the show in her levity and how it affects the others and brings out like a certain side of them and it's put there on purpose and i think it's done pretty well quality wise i wouldn't um i wouldn't complain much again if i'm just going to reiterate uh, too much story backlog of times that things are happening little tidbits of what did happen and the ramifications of that and this villain depends on that who's a great actress uh, i mean in that like marvel does that a lot you could have a great put like you know christian bale he, can, he didn't do enough in that Thor movie although i like what he did uh, marvel has a you know they're more concerned about the hero's journey which is fine and like i said you're gonna have fun and go with it but i would really like to see a more commitment to serious cosmic stuff maybe you won't get that here i don't know what they're doing next I have no clue of their fucking poster thing because me and my friend would go over like watch it and see oh you know what is on the slate i don't even do that no more to be honest i don't think the last time i checked again just like my other review with um andor if i'm in the mood i'll just eat up all the content and just like the star wars i'm doing now you know four hour podcast the state of this you know with rebels and uh, Ahsoka and how it's all piecing together. <laughs> and I had done my big chunk of those, or at least recorded them, if I haven't released everything right. Because I think my last one is like Andor. And before that was the, um, I think the Flash. Uh, you know, I'm a superhero geek. I don't think there's really a lull. I think quality does get lowered across the board. It's just part of the process, I think. Uh, you know, the Avengers Endgame is still the high point, or, you know, the Avengers taught around that period. I guess I could pull out some movies that I really like, like, whoever would have thought when I first saw the first Ant-Man, I was going to be blown away, which I was. So, now, you want to get to Quantumania, okay, again, maybe a fun movie, but it just seems, um, the quality gets a little lowered on how they're made and stuff. That could be a general trend, it could be something I think maybe you see a blurb that one of the people in charge is worried about they're revamping i think uh, if i were to say any concerns that i have seen that resonated with me might have been daredevil because i like daredevils again she hulk i had fun with that fucking show but i'm not going to go around you know telling everybody it's a 10 and trying to fight for its uh critical acclaim or whatever but they're fucking fun i was captivated by the lead actress the way she portrays it the way they decided to cut things and you got Daredevil in there, and Daredevil's getting hyped for his own thing, and now it's like people getting fired. You hear the same thing about the Blade, how they doing Midnight Suns. And by the way, Facebook's getting too, because I checked out for like family stuff, but Facebook's getting too fucking crazy with fake shit. How many Terminator 6 or 7s I've seen, the Predator fucking 4 or 9, and it's like fake posters and bullshit clickbait for trailers, so... I don't know, I, I see this movie and it ties in well with the original, the shows, I'm okay with it. You know, a little disappointed with the quantum bands. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I, I want it to be the mega band so bad. And the purple energy just started getting to me. Oh, I want to fucking scream sometimes. That's what a nerd I am and what the quantum bands mean to me. However, they've gotten representation, finally. You know, my friend who has a moniker like the Phoenix. Yeah. We, everything we watch, like sometimes we'll watch a show and if something has a name like Phoenix, something, he gets a little cheer. And every time Quantum is mentioned, I cheer. So nowadays with Quantum Mechanics, I cheer a lot. But to have it in a movie, it's like, all right, all right, okay. I got to visit the Quantum Bands. But fuck, I want them to be uh, just like the comic book. Damn it. Missed opportunity in that sense, but they can always correct things. They did it in the fucking comics. They turned them from awesome things to, I don't know, I guess you can mutate them or transmute them all over your suit. 
because Quasar's late cost. I know I'm fucking ranting about bullshit at the end of a Marvel's movie, but this is what this movie brings to mind. Like, what is the potential of, you know, Carol Danvers igniting a sun and getting the attention of a watcher and you get the Celestials or... That, you know, I just mentioned something. Isn't there a frozen fucking Celestial? Or a fucking marbleized Celestial? Like, taking up half a country? Like, his head and shoulder? Like, what the fuck is that? That's the Eternals. Put that, you know what? That would fit well with this. Because it would be like, um, you know what? Do it. Fuck it. Anyway, the Marvels. I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. It's, I don't think it's a great movie. Um, if I had to say breakout performance, Miss Marvel, and a couple of, you know, moments here and there. The camaraderie and blending of all three of their stories, I thought was done okay, except for the hiccups there and there. But how they gra- gradually get to know each other, and because part of the movie's problem is, well, the problem in the movie is, when someone uses their powers, they switch places with another person. And in the beginning, it's chaos and it really causes more harm than good. So, you know, if, if, but if they do normal things, like if they just run, punch, fly, apparently, but once they tap into their energy and try to do something, it switches with someone else. And again, like I said, I thought it was pretty cool, the little montage where they jump and rope together and they got to get their timing down. And, you know, opening up with the characters and the growth. I think that's the best part of the movie. And if that's what the movie's about, that's supposed to be pushing, then in that sense, you know, I don't give a fuck really about um, how much it made. Is it this? Is it that? A women's movie? Whatever. You know, it is what it is. Am I going to be entertained with my dumb brain and smoking my weed and imagining cosmic characters and how I'm going to weave this into my role playing because I try to take parts of the movies and kind of blend them in because they don't really happen. I think my world diverges on Thanos snap because we stopped them. Our characters with the Avengers help when I role played it stop Thanos from snapping his fingers so the snap never happened. So I got to really like play with things, but it gives me the advantage of having people who like, let's say you love this movie. And you wanted to role play. Well, you can maybe role play one of the characters or get your own powers and it would be part of the rotation of guest stars and maybe a mentor. I think they did that with Shazam. You know, I put that in writing with the Marvel stuff. Like, I don't care. Um, anyway, the Marvels. Watch it if you liked everything else. I think it has a fun vibe to it. It's got some catchy moments. It could be a little better tightened up and... Something's left out to be explained, or a little bit more preparation could have made it uh, a really exceptional movie. But sadly, it's not in that case. But again, if it's fun for you, it's fun. I, I think I would be. You see, okay, I'm a little interested in what might happen potentially. So oh, I'm gonna give it that too. Like when I watch Loki, am I gonna see something? Is what if gonna tie in? Again, it could be my fucking pissed offness at the quantum bands but okay anyway hope everybody is having a good time merry christmas happy new year hope everything is great wonderful year that's coming up my best to you and yours bye-bye